Trooper Michael Proctor, the decision on his status, right? He got mm -hmm. immediately after the hung jury was announced, I think an hour or two later, Massachusetts State Police said that they were reassigning him. And we know from police lingo what that meant. And like people were like a little confused in the beginning. Melanie, Ed were like, oh, he's fired. Yeah, you know, everybody was celebrating. I kind of knew just from being around the job so long that he was just taken out of his elite cushy position. Yes. And then you write nutbag, as Chief would say, correct? Correct. Who's Chief? A uh, friend of mine. And then you write what? She's got a leaky balloon knot. Trooper Proctor, explain to the jurors what a balloon knot is. Uh, your, uh, essentially, I guess your rectum area. Your anus? Yes. That's how you were treating Miss Reed? Yes or no? Yes. He's telling his buddies, he's texting his buddies from elementary school. It's the girl. You know, we're going to pin it on the girl. Yeah. Yeah. Done. Case closed. He said, isn't the homeowner going to catch some, you know, shit for having this on his front lawn, a dead body? And he goes, nope. He's a look at, cop too. Yes. And look at all the unreasonable actions by all of these people. Noted that Trooper Michael Proctor has said his words were, quote, unprofessional and regrettable. But still, as he sat in front of the courtroom reading these text messages aloud, you can imagine how for some it was hard to hear, referring to Karen Reed as a whack job. And in fact, in one of those texts to his sister, Proctor said, quote, hopefully she kills herself. I think I've been very clear and I want to remain very clear. Uh, misconduct in any way, shape or form in the Massachusetts state police will not be tolerated. I think I've said uh, that I condemn those comments in the strongest terms possible. Uh, they are not reflective of the Massachusetts state police. That's not where we want to be in as, a, as an organization. Hoping to hear directly from Chief Helena Rafferty about the decision to place Detective Kevin Albert on leave. All we've heard so far comes in the form of this statement that was read last night at the meeting of the select board. Chief Rafferty has placed Kevin Albert on paid administrative leave while an outside and please be quiet while an outside independent investigation is being conducted relative to his actions in a case he investigated with Michael Proctor approximately two years ago. The announcement during last night's Canton Select Board meeting that Detective Kevin Albert is on leave comes nearly a month after the fact. Kevin Albert's leave began June 13th, three days after State Trooper Michael Proctor took the witness stand in the Karen Reed trial and admitted to drinking with Kevin Albert after Canton police had recused itself from the O'Keefe death investigation due to conflicts of interest. On cross-examination, defense attorney Alan Jackson confronted Proctor about drinking with Detective Albert one day back in 2022 after working on a cold the fact case. That during Proctor's text messages, there's evidence that after Officer Don O'Keefe's body was found dead on Brian Albert's lawn, Proctor and Brian Albert's brother, Kevin Albert, who's a Canton cop, go to the Cape, get hammered, and Kevin Albert texts Higgins, the, uh, not Higgins, Proctor the next day and says, dude, where's my gun? Did you find my gun? I was hung over for sure today, exclamation point, exclamation point. Couple tonight to make me feel good, end quote. Correct? Correct. Does that refresh your recollection that the two of you had been out drinking the night before? He got so drunk that he couldn't find his badge and couldn't even find his gun. In my car. And he's like, no, but I found your badge in my patrol car, but he couldn't find his gun. So he's out drinking with Brian Albert's brother to the point where the guy loses his gun and his badge did you and find that it in came my out car? during his testimony. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. Last time I checked, driving while intoxicated is a crime. And uh, no police officers or their families or anybody should be doing that. Ed, go ahead. Yeah, and driving your cruiser when intoxicated is also a no-no. Yeah. Michael Proctor faced one of four possible outcomes. He is now facing the most severe, suspended without pay, and happening right now here in South Boston. You can see a very vocal, it has gotten a little smaller in the last couple hours, but a very vocal group that has gathered here outside the state police barracks. I don't like they say angry. That's just not my vocabulary, so I use motivated. People are motivated for change in the Massachusetts state police. But I think in the betterment of the trial and for this thing to go on, they might have held back, but I don't know. The things that he said towards the, the defendant, Karen Reed, were just inexcusable. It is horrific when you talk about wishing someone to kill themselves and tell them to commit suicide. Like, 
these things, and that is just one of the things. He said so many different things. He used the C word. He talked about her condition. Let's uh, just talk about like the lack of an investigation for a dead brother in blue. Like that's, I just can't get past that. Mm. There was no investigation, not to mention, I mean, you can't even say a proper investigation because there was little to no investigation. The guy had conflicts of interest all over the place. He was investigating his friends. He had close ties to the homeowner. Um, you know, he tried to strong arm the ME into changing her manner of death on the, on the death certificate. I mean, it just gets deeper and deeper and deeper. The vile, the vile text messages are really almost the least of it, you know? These are internal proceedings. Uh, there's nothing involved with the DA. There's <laughs> nothing involved with any other outside entities. All of this information to include what transpired in court during Trooper Proctor's testimony. This is me speaking on June 9th. And McGee says that testimony in open court makes this case much different than the ones usually conducted by state police internal affairs. In the end, the board finding Proctor should be suspended without pay, a recommendation accepted by the head of the state police. There's a lot of things that are happening behind the scenes. There are a lot of layers to this type of a process. But certainly this is, for an administrative proceeding, a, what we would call due process. Like this whole vile conversation. And he was, I was happy that he was forced to read it back, uh, you know, with the defense. You know, Mr. Jackson, he put him in a corner. He had him. And those were only found through the FBI because the FBI got his personal cell phone records. So a lot of people defend that saying, well, those are his personal cell phone records. They never should have even had access to them. But listen, the guy was texting his supervisor, Buchanick, and a couple of other troopers about how he's searching Karen Reed's phone for nudes. I mean, yeah. it's hard to get past as a woman, mm -hmm. as a lawyer, as a mother, as, as I'm sure for you as law enforcement, that's kind of hard to get by, but you know. Yeah. I, yeah, keep telling, I keep telling these rookie cops these days, you know, anything can be evidence, your social media footprint, your, your text messages, your emails, you're discussing active cases. Yeah. Guess what? That's evidence. Mm -hmm. This guy's no. dumb as a stump if he thought that he could get away with just texting with his private cell phone to his supervisors, no less. And that's that's another point that I wanted to bring up here is, is that his sergeants and his first line supervisors and going right up the ladder to the big bosses who run that unit, they all should be held accountable because he was texting them and they were liking some of the things that he was texting them. Like he, they were putting a like onto the comment. And like for me, I, I felt like, you know, these guys, they're responsible for the members of their of, of their squad. Mm -hmm. And uh, Trooper Proctor was a member of that elite DA prosecutor squad. Um, whoever his boss was, his immediate boss, and then the, uh, it, the shit runs downhill, flows downhill with these, with the police departments. So I think er everybody should be at least reprimanded here because nobody corrected him. Nobody tried to tell him, hey, yo, you, you're out of line. Police chief here in Canton confirms that Kevin Albert, a detective here in Canton, was placed on leave back on June 13th. That was three days after Trooper Michael Proctor took the witness stand in the Karen Reed case. The chief says Albert is on administrative leave pending an investigation into Proctor's testimony. On the witness stand, Proctor acknowledged he was friends with Kevin Albert. He told the jury they went out drinking several months after John O'Keefe died. They worked on a cold case together and communicated about the O'Keefe case. The Canton Police Department had already recused itself from the investigation due to Albert's connection to it. Kevin Albert's brother, Brian, was a key witness for the prosecution and one of the people the defense tried to implicate in O'Keefe's death. Now, earlier this week, Proctor was placed on unpaid leave by the state police following a duty status hearing, and that was due to offensive text messages that he sent from his personal phone to colleagues as well as friends. Those messages, of course, were about Karen Reed. The union representing Trooper uh, Proctor calls the move, quote, disappointing. In a statement, the state police is Association of Massachusetts says it, quote, will never condone the unacceptable language used in personal text messages presented as evidence during the trial. But the union says the suspension is a punishment for Proctor's family. Trooper Proctor remains the subject of an ongoing internal affairs investigation. Right. No. Well, how, how pervasive is this in the Mass State Police? Yeah. I mean, is it, this can't be just one incident of this because, as you said, there were many line supervisors going up in rank 
that were part of these messages and nobody did anything to stop it. Melanie, I see you're ready to chime in. That's true. It's true. Listen, they've had a lot of scandals lately. The Massachusetts State Police, during the pendency of this case, before the trial started, Josh Levy, who's the acting U.S. attorney uh, in the state of Massachusetts, indicted a bunch of other Massachusetts state troopers. They were trading, get this, trading commercial driver's licenses yeah. to guys in exchange for things like driveways, plunge pools, mailboxes. Like, there's a, there have been a lot of overtime scandals. Like, this is not the first scandal to hit the MSP. But, you know, and the FBI, I think, is looking into all this stuff. This could have been collateral damage to something else that they were investigating or a collateral issue. We really don't know. But yeah, there are no strangers so. I, to the scandal. I think you're Situation. 100% right. You know, the FBI doesn't tip his hand like this or doesn't get involved normally in a state or uh, local homicide trial. Well, it was on the second floor of this building right here. Many people huddled inside where the uh, chairman of the select board revealed that police officer Kevin Albert, who is the brother of Brian Albert, that's the man who owned the home where John O'Keefe's body was found, was placed on administrative leave nearly a month ago. Now, after he said that, there was an audible gasp in the room with many people surprised, but he went on to say that the reason is because, quote, actions in a case he investigated with Trooper Michael Proctor approximately two years ago. Your now, chief of police, your select board members are part of a cover up, and that's earth shattering for townies. And Chris Albert, who is Kevin Albert's other brother, publicly apologized for two outbursts he made uh, some time ago, uh, saying that stress and anxiety his family has uh, really undergone over the past 16 months is the reason for that. Okay. But for right now, this town no is run by the Miguel. That, that is who this town is run by. People do not run this town. The select board does not run this town. The Miguelbits run this town. And Chris Albert, the reason he has the behavior that he has is because there's no consequences and he is allowed, he is allowed to run havoc and terrorize this town and sick the people after us. And that is a problem. He that was in that text chain that was a supervisor that was putting emojis for liking and all these other things, they all need to be disciplined too. Trooper Proctor is the lead on the Brian Walsh case, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. It's a problem. Well, That's why I think they didn't discipline her, him earlier because they need him on Walsh, but... Ed, you know that case, you know, um, we, we cover that in depth. Uh, you know, he cut his wife up and deposited her in, in different locations. Trooper Proctor's on that case. What the hell's going to happen to that case? That's what, uh, what I worry well, about. It's not just that case. Now, defense attorneys whose uh, cases have already been adjudicated, they're going to go in there and they're going to request all this digital forensics on, done on his um, computers, his phones. They're going to want social media. They're going to look at all of this stuff, all right? Because, you know, well, once you're tainted like this, this is what happens. All those old cases get re-looked at and opened up to see if there's now a crack that can exploit to maybe overturn a conviction. All of, and I, I don't want, I don't like to use this, uh, this term, but you need to drain the swamp in the Massachusetts State Police because the swamp is filthy. And for these folks to it, exchange text messages back and forth jokingly as it pertains to a defendant's life, mm -hmm. this is the difference between life and, 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 and somebody's freedom. Uh, and you're early on and within 16 hours already drawing your conclusions. Mm -hmm. And what we're outlining here as investigators is a very important part of their brother's puzzle being solved. And for police officer John O'Keefe, the fact that a matter of a, a, a guy like Trooper Proctor comes in there and the whole rest of the team, uh, and they do what they do, and the, these Canton Ricky Dink cops, Lieutenant Blank and Lieutenant Gallagher, and uh, to mention a few, what they did with the, with the belief blower and the solo cups and the fuckery that went on there, is enough to make you want to cry as a good police officer uh, rooting for justice for a fallen brother. Uh, I, I just can't see how anybody from our field can sit and look at this thing and say, um, yeah, Karen Reed's guilty. Uh, no. It, it, I mean, if you look at this um, through the proper lens and you pay attention to the details that matter most, you can't say that. If you do, then you're not looking at this thing in its entirety.
We look at the totality of everything put together and it just doesn't add up.